Hey everyone, welcome to Mother Nature Healing Tarot. We're going to do our weekly spiritual message for this week, March 24th to, we'll do to next Sunday, which will be the 31st of March. So we're going to finish out the end of March. And I hope that everyone had a beautiful purging during the full moon uh, when we move into the, the sign of Aries. Also, the spring equinox, um, which caused a big shift in a lot of our lives. So, blessings to everyone who is watching this channel. If this message resonates for you, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel and keep tuned for the next messages for the upcoming weeks. And if it does not, check back next week and see um, if this message resonates because time is fluid. So this could have happened in the past, present, or something that is upcoming in the future. So in effort, me saying that this is a weekly message, this is actually a timeless message. So whenever you come across it, it is for the timing for you, if you are part of my soul group. So I am going to start um, by uh, cleansing the energy in our space. Um, I do want to sage. I did do this off camera before um, I started recording, but just energetically or physically, what is it called? Like virtually, if you need some sage, I'm going to do it for you. So join with me to say that you are cleansing your space, your area, your presence, and anything, any energies that are around you that could come and block messages from you whatever you are meant to receive at this time we are cleansing that from this space so anything that is energetically blocking you anything that is not meant um, to be in your divine life at this time we are asking for those things to come and leave um, also I do want clarity want these messages to bring forth for your highest potential your highest good in this so I'm going to let that continue to burn out while I use the singing bowl. So if you don't know about Tibetan singing bowl, this is a frequency and it helps to cleanse out um, the space. So it can reach a little bit further than what sage can. Um, it will, it'll vibrate out and cleanse your whole room or area, whatever it can reach through the sound waves that it bounces off of and it sets the tone and the vibration um, at a more healthier state, you know, especially with us receiving a lot of frequencies from our electronics and different things like that. This is a good way to offset some of those things so then you are receiving from directly the divine instead of being blocked and distracted in other ways. So I'm going to sit on the table so then um, it can continue to ring until it's ready to go out. Okay. So everyone, intention with your mindset to cleanse your air and your space with the with the hearing of this sound. Okay. Okay. So now we have crystal here. I've, I've tried to turn my table a little bit so we could so you guys can see um, what I was being drawn out as being drawn so let me go ahead and get to this reading for this week i know we're ready to see what type of shifts are occurring there's a lot of changes that's been happening with a lot of people's internal so now it's going to be moving towards external uh, messages so we want to try to see what is going to be happening for us for this week so I have different sets of uh, decks that I'm going to read from. Some of them are oracle cards, some of them are traditional tarot, and some of them, well, I do have one deck that is going to be for divine unions on what to expect for this week for those who are um, in divine twin, well, twin flame partnerships, divine masculine, divine feminine, finding balance, or even finding balance within self if you're not in a union right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start and I do have some of my books that I like to clarify with because I just love their interpretations of the decks. So this deck is the Crystal's Angel Tarot. 
So this is more of an oracle card. If you do have these crystals, when I start to talk about it, these would be good crystals to carry for the week. So let's get one card from Divine as an oracle message. Uh, what do the collective need to know? Well, we have two, so I'm going to take both of them. Off rip, before I even go into the message, you know what? I'm just going to do it as, as I go. I like to pull all the cards and look at it and kind of do but I'm going to do it individually, and if I see a bigger message on top of that, I'll do that too. Okay, so we have So Delight. Socialize and join in. Make healthy and supportive new friendships and connections by getting involved with a group of like-minded people. This came up last week for us. Um, let me move this so I can see. Okay. This came up last week for us. So this is continuing on to that theme. Making sure that you're linking with people who are like-minded with you because they're going to help you expand your vision. What we talked about last week was that we were coming into our power in being healers or being able to shift um, realities by the type of people that we're coming into uh, contact with, that they were able to help us with our raising our vibrations um, and that we can exchange services in some sense like okay so if the people that you're around are like-minded and they are gifted in one area then they can also help you expand on your gift so that's something to take note of the other and i do have a soda like crystal um i'll see if i can actually it's on my waist <laughs> oh yeah i do have waist beads y'all uh for these are for healing Look, this is soda light. It's a blue color. It's really beautiful. But it is for healing, um, especially with your emotions and things like that, keeping them balanced. Um, so that is something. If you do have soda light, that would be really good to keep on your body, keep near, keep in your purse, uh, just keep in your home or wherever you are, just kind of in your space. The other um, crystal is Suja light. It says, own your divine power. Replace codependent people pleasing with assertiveness and empowerment. That's beautiful. Okay, one, uh, you know, making sure you're releasing yourself from codependency uh, patterns. If you've been having a lot of dreams uh, this past week, that is helping you to release some of the codependency that you may have uh, set in your childhood with, with uh, either like having lack of parenting or being involved in some traumas or just negative cho well, choices that we can deem to be negative that creates our shadows. Um, it could create codependency within things. So the same to release those. So being more sure with self and understanding that you are powerful and, and that you are one, you do possess your divine masculine and feminine capabilities together. And it's finding a healthy way to express that without having to depend you do not have to have to have a need for anyone on the outside to fulfill that for you you do have all in one because you are a god or a goddess so that is something to take note of and i don't have to pull from the book with that also colors all right we're going to talk about colors for a second let me get move this notification okay so purple all right we talk about chakras all right that's the crown chakra all right so if the, we're doing, we're going to pull a chakra card now. Crown chakra come out. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. But purple being the crown chakra, that is the top of your head. That is where you receive messages from the divine. That is where you receive your, um, your true authentic self is connected in that way. You know, where your third eye is in, in the top of your head. So you're receiving messages from the divine. So in order to balance these, this is what you're going to be focusing on uh, as a supplementary to whatever chakra card comes out is the balance part of your crown. So being out of nature, I have, for example, I have the patio doors open, so you can probably hear the outside. Um, being in the sun, being in the moon, being outside, okay? Also, if you are an empath and you're absorbing a lot of negativity, you're going to be needing to cleanse and clear from your crown chakra. Women, if you wear extensions and all that for, for real human hair, you need to cleanse it before you attach it onto your head. It's very important. Also, head wrapping, covering your hair, 
protecting your divine power on top of knowing that you have divine power, but it's also in protecting that um, because you do not want to mix up your messages and your clarity because your crown chakra is very important. It's a, right above your head, actually. Um, but it's very important in how you balance out the rest of your body. So with your crown chakra, if it is misaligned, it'll misalign everything else in your whole chakras, uh, well, all your chakras, and they'll be in disharmony or could potentially close off a chakra, which would throw off a lot of different things. So we want to come into balance. Last week we were talking about coming into balance um, with the full moon energy. So this is another part of it. So if your crown chakra is a little distorted or that you do not have the clarity to know what, where to go, maybe feeling confused in some ways, then definitely these crystals, saging, the Tibetan singing bowl would be really good, going out into nature, taking spiritual baths, being part, basically uh, being in the elements. Um, so, you know, making sure that you have an equal balance with those. So that's one thing to notice with that. Okay, so now... Let me go ahead and pull the chakra card since we're talking about it and see in the divine what chakra do we need to focus on for this week. Four. Okay. This is your heart. Heart chakra. It goes along with your crown, okay? Your heart chakra is the connection between the internal and the external, okay? In tarot, we usually represent this card with the empress card, which is being able to manifest and birth things in from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. So more so above your heart chakra is your throat, your third eye, and your crown, which are more spiritual aspects of how you communicate with the divine, okay? Then how you express, which would be your solar plexus, your willpower, then your sacral, which is through reproduction or basically um, things that you manifest through there, and then your root, which is how you are grounded and how you actually uh, materialize in this realm, um, the heart is the transfer for that. So not, alone, not only being the crown chakra being important as far as having the ability to receive the messages, kind of like, just think about like the sunshine on your head and it just radiates through, the heart is how you transfer that message into your real life. So being able to manifest the, your heart desires. So when I think about this, I think about clearing out, okay, long, tie it in, with own your divine power and codependent behaviors. You have to think about, are you being your true self? Are you doing what you really want to do within your heart? Okay, um, I watched the movie this past week. We're going to see the movie Us and not going to spoil anything for anyone, but it was a balance between your shadow and your higher self and how in your higher self you may not be doing everything that you can in your highest potential because you're going off the programs of things that were set into balance. And in your lower self, you know, even though it is a shadow of your higher self and maybe operating in a negative state, however, there is a drive or gifts that are down there that can be brought forth if you can find balance. Okay, so with your heart chakra being straight in the middle, I would say that balance is still important this week for us because we are going to need to tie in our true authentic self that is embracing all that is within us, healing whatever past issues, inner child issues that are causing us to attach to outside things in this world. Let me make sure I can see. Okay, and, um, and making sure that we are able to keep that within perspective to externalize and make into our material world. So heart chakra for this week, colors are green, pink, and you can use rose quartz. And if you have right here, this is a rose quartz. I have the raw rose quartz, but you can get a smooth one. It's up to you. I like 
the raw elements, um, or green like aventurine, jade, emerald, you know, different things like that. You can also wear those colors and that would also help you with your, um, with uh, manifesting in that uh, vegetables, anything you can eat that is green, being out of nature, being around anything green is going to help for this week also. And don't forget about the crown chakra supplementary of that because you do want to clear your heart space to where you are operating from your true authentic self, your divine power. But then you also want to make sure that you're not blocked in any way to where you're confused on what this divine power is. It's an awakening, okay? So a lot of people are going to be having some shifts in their mentality for this week as long as they are lining up free will with what the divine has for them and what they have for themselves. Okay, so let's pull another message. Okay, and this is from, I like to read from this book. This is the Tarot of the Four Elements. I love the depiction of it because I also tell about uh, traditional versus their imagery in the suit. So let's see, divine message. We get two cards. One message from the divine for for the collective for this week. What can we get? Okay. All right. More transformations on the way. Okay. So let's go on close to it so I can show you guys. Number 12, the shaman card. Okay. One plus two is three. And then we have number 13, the death card. So shaman and death. These are both major arcana cards. This is three and four. So if you're seeing two, 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 three, 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 or more. Okay. Here, take it. Two, 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 three, 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 four, four, four. These are going to be messages for you. So let me read from the book just to give some clarity death already that's a scorpio energy we just moving out of the moon from being in the scorpio and aries with aries sun which is very heavy mars energy which would be a, a warlike you know so if you had some intense feelings from the past couple of days coming out then that would be part of that reasoning why but death is transformation it is beginnings and endings and with death and rebirth you're not coming back in the same state so the way that things have to progress from after this death, whatever spiritual sense or experience that's going to happen, it will not continue in the same way as it was before. There is no way to go back to the same way. So that is definitely showing transformation. So the shaman card is similar to the hangman. Okay, look. Because this person is hanging upside down. Now there's a little bit of... A lot of different symbolism in it so I'm going to read it I wish there was a way to prop it up but can't do it right now so so in traditional tarot this the hangman usually appears as an upside down figure suspended from a beam of living wood so you hang it from a tree usually hanging by one ankle while the other leg is bent forming a triangular design three okay Sometimes his arms are tied behind his back, and this creates another triangular form. The person appears serene, calm, and is not dead. Instead, this figure represents the need to turn your values completely around as you begin to understand the greater mysteries concealed within spiritual life, death, and rebirth. Okay. All right. <clears throat> this card can signify renunciation, renunciation, sacrifice, repentance, and surrender. So surrendering to your heart, your true self. All right, I'm going to come closer because I want to show you guys the card so you can, you can meditate on it while I read the description. So the shaman in this picture is on a soul journey where his spirit meets the terrain of life's secrets and sorrows. He has reached a point of evolution where he must birth a new consciousness and reverse his understanding of life. Everything looks different to him now. His feet extend up into the sky where the branches of trees dance freely, unencumbered. His upper torso is submerged in the underground world where he meets the eyes of nature, the serpents of wisdom who, with compassion in their gaze, teach him the knowledge of unseen worlds. They are the mystical dreamers of the dark. 
The shaman's eyes are wide open, the stars around his head, serving as luminous lanterns in the darkened caverns of the earth. It appears as he is being eaten by the earth, which is symbolic of how his mystical experiences consume him. He extends a wide eye expression of amazement and joy to all. So this is talking about, I'm sorry, I'm all close to it. The portal of time that you're going to be traveling through, I think it has a lot to do with the shadow self versus the higher self, the contrast, the point of duality that that is within this card that you're going to be finding balance within. And I think portion of that would be having to visit um, some of those dark places within you to really understand where you're being called to next. So that is one part of the death and rebirth. So let's go on to the next. Let's talk about the death card. Okay, so in most traditional tarot decks, we witness the skeletons uh, carrying a scythe, often on a horseback. This figure is killing or destroying everyone and everything in its path. That includes ordinary people or royal or religious figures. Thus, no one is immune for the, from the cosmic power of death. While the death card is number 13 in the major arcana, and this number is often associated with misfortune, the appearance of this image is more connected with the need to die to old ideas, concepts, and thoughts in order to be reborn into a higher dimension of spiritual truth. It's not a card of violent demise, but rather reveals crucial need for in-depth psychological transformation. It definitely goes along with our crystal angel cards, talking about on our divine power and the shift in our mindset that is going to be happening, especially when we deal with issues of the heart. So in this image, come on back, let me come on back. So, all right. Throughout India, the dancing skeleton has been a symbol representing the stripping away and death of illusion, desire, greed, and attachment to mortal life. Often depicted in a joyous dance, its image stands in striking juxtaposition to Western views where the fear of death prevails. One can almost hear the hollow laugh of the skeleton spirit who, with the flame of passion still burning within, has managed to strip away the dancing bones that also could be the leaves of autumn falling off the trees. The head appears detached from the body of bones, floating like a balloon, hovering with the light at the newly found freedom of form and spirit. With a mighty sword, the spirit dweller cuts away all distractions and limitations. The beautiful flame that resides at the center of the skeleton assures the revival of the soul and the renewal of energy that restores all life within and without. It is time for transformation in your life. You may have resisted this change for some time. However, your higher guides have been busy pruning away all the non-essentials that clutter your life. Okay, so like I said, people having healing within their dreams, um, being challenged this week. This full moon has given a huge shift in our reality because I see, see purple and green in both of these cards uh, with the heart and the crown. You're being redirected so a lot of the traumas and fears that cause you to be codependent are coming up right now for you to deal with for you to not push away anymore um to embrace and and to say this is part of me and deal with whatever you need to deal with in order to heal that for yourself so that is going to clear your heart space and unblock or put you back into harmony and then also with your crown written different things that is going to distract you from receiving messages that are divine for your life. This is very beautiful. Also with death in the shaman card, the hangman is, is traditionally known to tell you to wait. And then the death card is to allow things to clear themselves out. So in waiting, you're not waiting in vain because while you're waiting, there is a transformation happening. Now, if this is talking about divine unions, then this is telling one party they need to wait while the other party goes through a transformation. So, very beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay, so now, let me go and get to my traditional Rider Waite tarot deck. This is more how I started out doing tarot with the traditional deck. This is my first deck right here. It's been through a lot. It's been in a lot of places. Pull. Let me pull. There they go. They're just coming out. That's green. That's why I wanted to pull. Okay. 
bottom of the deck, the Empress card. The Empress card, which is, I told you <laughs> part of your heart chakra, which is someone able to manifest from spiritual to the physical plane. The Empress is not here for no reason, okay? So the three cards that came out is the Ten of Pentacles. The Four of Cups in reverse. And then the Nine of Cups in reverse. So now, let's let's relate this to the total reading. Okay, the Ten of Pentacles is coming into stability in the material world. Becoming grounded. Okay, when your heart is thrown off, if your crown is thrown off, then uh, <laughs> technically the way that you live your life and materialize in your life is also going to be thrown off. So in finding this grounding, now someone may be coming into financial stability this week, um, well, having opportunities for more stability um, and union. It's not only just stability in the material world, but it is representative of home and family and career. Um, those are some things that could be happening. Um, but as far as our emotional self, we're going to be feeling very dissatisfied. Uh, the Ten of Cups, the Nine of Cups is is an ending and usually represents coming in well feeling like your our desires are being met uh the four of cups is like being bored or with an offer that is coming to you from the universe so now it may be not high emotional week for us because we're really working on getting our stability working on things that are practical that are going to bring some material gain so that could be part of the hangman like waiting for our desires to manifest and then finding the grounding. Now we know what steps to take that are going to help us in being grounded and finding grounding in our circumstance and our in our part of life. And then with the four of cups, this is in reverse is saying, okay, well this week, you know, any offers that are going to be tied with emotions is not really going to play out well because we are not really dealing with our emotional self right now. We are dealing with mind versus versus body. So the emotional self now, that's where the challenge is because with the, with the heart chakra coming up is going to be having to find, to actually actualize and move from here to here and put them together to feel um, and create a balance from both the mind and how you materialize them. So how you feel when I talk about the law of attraction becoming first your thought then it becomes your feeling then you line your action your solar plexus up which is your fire energy water is your feeling air is your thought then it becomes earth which is how you materialize and how you actually receive that so this week making sure that you find this balance that you actually put forth effort into into finding out your divine power and balancing your heart chakra because it may be a little difficult which is why the waiting card and the death card transformation is here it is going to be divine it's not really going to be something that you're choosing to do it's just going to be circumstance that is going to allow this to happen and you're going to actively have to play a part in it for it to be able to manifest in your life okay so lastly let me no i have one I'm going to pull for our divine unions, divine feminine and masculine from my twin flame oracle deck. There are some messages that we can receive for this week for our partnerships and unions. What do we need to focus? Last week was synergy and walk away, which was basically give space and knowing that everything is in divine timing, uh, that things are coming out to place. So what is for this week? Really feel this, these two cards on point. Okay. All right. So this week we have practical twin flame <laughs> that is talking about the material world. Okay. You see on there, there is car, there is earth. Okay. Practical. What can you guys manifest together right now? Okay. Then we have unavailable. Okay, right now there's some soul work that needs to be 
feeling. So they may not be typically available for you because there's some things that are happening that are practical that are happening in the material world. It's kind of getting preparation for the union to come. And then conflict. So now this is, now you have to understand, you see there's fire versus water on the picture of the card. So now this is talking about, if you're talking about the union, this for, like there's, there's an offer that's being made to the other. Now they have these other cups that they're dealing with and they're not able to accept the cup at the time. Okay, they are not feeling fulfilled or having the desires of their heart because there is issues in finding stability right now. So conflict, you, you can avoid conflict by giving still continuing to give that space and, and allowing what can you manifest materially together at this time because that is where the focus is going to be for this week for relationships that are in divine partnerships, even if they're in space. Um, if you're not in union, as of yet, there is still some work that's being done as far as, like I said, the matters of the heart. So trying to come and offer and be super emotional this week is not really going to play out well. It's more about what can we do that's practical. Can we go jobs, <laughs> work, okay, money, um, getting our home together. Like what can we build right now? And just like the Empress, so your thought process is going to be very important um, as far as how you're manifesting this with your partnership. So not only just for how you do with yourself, but if you are on your twin flame journey, that's something also that you guys may be trying to build together, but it's going to be conflict because your ideas may not be matching right now. And it's more about uh, doing the work that's going to allow you to receive on what you really need to be doing spiritually that it's going to manifest into a practical sense. Okay, so last, I love ending with this deck last time. This is a triple goddess tarot. So I am going to pull one card, <laughs> divine will, um, for us for this week. So what is this last message for the divine? I'm going to reshuffle because I'm not coming with that one. Okay. Because <laughs> these interpretations are coming with me. So, one card for our divine collective. What do we need to know that is going to help us move in 